Hero Talk. This is my review of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Season 1, Episodes 1 through 30. This is part 1 of my Season 1 review of the TV show. And for those of you who don't know, my name is Jacob Bartley. I am a huge Power Rangers fan. I can't say it enough. Check out my t-shirt. Got it from Cosmic Comics for free from the lovely owner there, John. Thank you for that. Shout out. But yeah, I'm just... Child, my childhood was Power Rangers. Power Rangers and Star Wars and X-Men and Spider-Man and Batman. That's my childhood. That's where this YouTube channel comes from. And I love Power Rangers just as much as I love all those other things. And I have no shame in it. I, I remember in high school, I was kind of shamed to love it so much. And no one would ever talk about it like it was cool. But as I've grown to be an adult, I've realized that you cannot be shameful in what you love and I happen to love this material and just the Mighty Morphin stuff after that it got way out of control like I, I, I watched the Zeo and the Turbo when I was a kid but it was never the same after the original cast members left season 2 of Power Rangers and once they got past Mighty Morphin I really I still like the later Mighty Morphin stuff and the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie, duh. But season one is where it's at. And I decided as my grown man self to watch season one, rewatch it again because while I remember it as a kid, I was not, I couldn't just recall specific episodes or certain moments. So I wanted to get up to date on it because I keep claiming that I am a Power Rangers fan. Now, before I get into it all, I'm going to just get all the negatives out of the way in the beginning because there's a bunch of them and I know the show is cheesy you can call it stupid if you want there definitely are stupid and cheesy moments but I'm here to celebrate the show I'm not here to bash it and as a fan of it I recognize its flaws but so I'm gonna get that stuff out of the way first and then talk about what I love about it and then talk about some specific episodes that really stood out to me. And again, this is Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Review Season 1, Part 1, Episodes 1 through 30. Let's get into it. So as far as the cheesiness goes, a lot of it surrounds Bulk and Skull. I, nostalgic for nostalgic purposes, I still like Bulk and Skull. Like they're a part of the Power Rangers as a whole, like not the the literal team but just the show and I, I appreciate their presence and they're important to the original show but they're just so dang it's way too over the top every time they show up I just I kind of want those moments to be over there's a few good moments with them like when they do something kind-hearted or like they're not being a-holes there's a cool few cool moments but overall bulk and skull just completely are the core of the cheesiness of the show and it's not the actor's fault it's not the character's fault it's just the way they wrote the characters and the tone of the show and what they were going for and back in the 90s it worked for comedic relief but watching it now the comedy involving them does not hold up also another thing that really bothers me in the show is the unrealistic scenarios and explanations for things like oh by the way I should have said this right from the beginning. I'm gonna be talking spoilers. So yeah, just every episode, like the way that Rita goes about attacking the Power Rangers and how the Power Rangers defeat the monsters and then how Rita just keeps trying the same thing over and over again and never works. And that aspect of it gets a little tiring from episode to episode. Now, there are a lot of occasions where it doesn't get repetitive and do that, but a lot of the time it's repetitive and Rita just keeps unrealistically doing the same exact thing over and over again. And again, who cares? Because you want to get to, you need to introduce conflict, have the Power Rangers fight the monsters, and then have them fight them in the Megazord. That's the ultimate goal of each episode. And they kind of just got to that scenario each time at the sake of sacrificing storytelling. So, whatever, you know, you can't be mad at that. And then also, going off of that, just Rita and her villains, just bad. I don't know. Like, 
again, like Vulcan Skull, nostalgic purposes, I still find some enjoyment in watching it, but Rita's just annoying, and her her most of her villains are just stupid and pointless, a lot of them, and even like her main villain crew is just pointless, other than Goldar. I like Goldar, and I like Scorpina, kind of, but for the most part, Rita and all her villains are just a uh, very low point on the show, and also one thing that really bothers me is the acting. Now, it's a show, these weren't, they got like martial artists to be in the show, so like they weren't like Broadway performers and stuff, as far as I know, but the acting is just bad, but again, 90s, who cares? It was for the times. And then one more thing is just the Power Rangers, you know they're going to win every time. There are a few times where they don't win and it's really difficult for them. But for the most part, they defeat the monster and it's just it's repetitive, repetitive storytelling. But it's a kid's show, so who the heck cares? All right, now that I got all the negatives out of the way, and there's other negatives, but those are the main things that I noticed that really bothered me and were low points on the show but now it's time to talk about the awesomeness and I legitimately think this stuff is awesome like I'm not just being biased there's a little bit of bias of course but I legitimately think this stuff is awesome and now I'm gonna start with the costumes I honestly think the costumes look dope like really they look dope like I think they're sick and I think even if you use the same exact costumes today, maybe like just make them look metal instead of just tights, then the same exact design, I think it would look great. Now, you know, the new movie coming out next year has a new, totally different design, which I'm cool with that, but I'm saying if they made like these same exact colors and designs from the show and just made it look metal, made it look like technology instead of just tights, I think it would look awesome. I think the costumes look great. Now, every single time they go into Morphin Time, I just get excited. Dragon Zord, or Pterodactyl, or, you know, all the other ones. I, I get excited. It's Morphin Time. Like, it's stupid, and the song comes on. I love it still. And then, another thing that I really enjoy is some of the action is really awesome like legitimately awesome like especially when the actors are just fighting like putties or you know somebody else not in the costume because a lot of the actors are actual martial artists like the actor who plays Jason and I believe Zach and Billy no Billy and Kimberly were gymnasts and then I think the other three were martial artists if I'm not mistaken so they got real and then Tommy is a martial artist too uh, so yeah, I some of the fight scenes are awesome, and then also even in the suits, it's, there's some awesome stuff too. Like there's a few episodes where they do some really cool stuff as far as the action goes, and then obviously the Megazord action is freaking dope. And duh, it looks bad now, but can you imagine being a five year old kid watching that when you were young? Like it's freaking awesome. Uh. Yeah, and like I said earlier, how like every episode they defeat Rita, but they don't always defeat Rita. And that's a, those episodes are some of my favorite because it's, sometimes it seems like she's winning and there there's no way for them to win this time. And they have to overcome these obstacles to beat her. And they don't always make it easy as far as the storytelling goes, so I really appreciate that. Not to sound cheesy at all, but I really do appreciate some of the character relationships and moments. Like, most of the time they're just joking around and dealing with Bulk in school but there's a lot of times where like some of the characters are dealing with real stuff and I know it's not that serious but I appreciate they took time to develop the characters when they had time to do it and that was something that I really enjoyed about it and just as far as some of the character aspects of each character I, I like I think Jason is my favorite character just because he's the leader and he's the most badass and he's he's always like looking out for the rest of the team and like on the battlefield and like socially and as a friend so really like him uh man all right i'm gonna be a guy for a second 
Kimberly, Amy Jo Johnson is so freaking hot. I'm sorry. I no shame there. She I got a crush on her when I was a kid, I have a crush on her now. Like she is a very attractive woman, I'll keep it at that. Um I actually I also really like Billy in his role. He's like he's the scientist and he he's very important to the team. They cannot get a lot of stuff done without Billy and even though he's not the best fighter he is arguably one of the most important team members on that team because he knows how to handle all the technological stuff and he knows how to outsmart anyone and any villain that they face so Billy is definitely one of my favorite characters as well and I, I love all of them I love Trini and Zach and Tommy but those are just some of the things that stood out to me about those characters in, in particular and the main element that I enjoy about the Power Rangers, other than all the other awesome stuff I just said, is that the mythology. Now, I I can tell watching this that it's inspired by Star Wars a lot. Like, there there's a lot of Star Wars inspirations in there. Like, I could tell whether it was Sabin or whoever the creative team was, they like took some inspiration from Star Wars. I can almost guarantee it. And the mythology kind of reminds me of a little bit of Star Wars a little bit of Transformers, and a little bit of Pacific Rim. This is what gets me so excited for the movie next year because we don't know what the tone or what they're going for. And I've heard some amazing things. I've talked about it so much, how the whole team they got together creatively and talent-wise is great. Just, I'm not going to go into it again, but think about this. You have a super-powered team with alien-based technology that's gives them their powers with who summon big robots to fight giant monsters like it reminds me of Star Wars a little bit with the space aspect and Transformers with the robots and Pacific Rim with the robots fighting the monsters imagine what you can do with that mythology in a realistic live action modern telling of this story it's I think it's gonna be freaking awesome I it's one of my most anticipated movies of next year. Cannot wait. I'm sure if you're watching this video and you care enough to watch it, you can't wait either. So, yeah. So, those are some of the things that I really love about the show. There's a whole bunch of other stuff that I like. And I'm going to get into the specific episodes that I really enjoyed. But I want to talk about something else really quick. And I, it's, it's hard to talk about the Power Rangers without talking about this. Especially the original Mighty Morphin series. Is that... I don't know who decided to... Now, I'm going to talk about a little bit of racism and diversity on the show. Now, you have Zach and Trini, right? It's great that they made the team diverse. Like, you have three white characters, four when Tommy comes in. But you have a, an African-American guy and an Asian and a Chinese girl. That's great. They could have made the whole cast white if they wanted to. They could have. But they didn't. They cast a black guy and an Asian girl. But then they make the black guy the black ranger and the Chinese girl the yellow ranger. And I don't know who decided to do that, but I acknowledge, and I'm not one to get crazy over race and stuff like that, um, but I acknowledge that that is some messed up stuff. It's very disrespectful, and I don't know who decided that that was a good idea. Hopefully we never have to do that again. In the new movie, That it's not like that. They have an Asian young man playing the black ranger. They have, I think... She's Hispanic, Becky G. I think she's Hispanic. She's playing the Yellow Ranger. And then you have uh, a black guy playing Billy and then two whites. So they changed that and they recognized that that was a mistake. But whoever decided to do that back in the day when the original series aired, that was a huge mistake and it's very disrespectful. And I do find it offending. But at the same time, like I'm not going to let it ruin my viewing experience. But I do acknowledge that it was wrong and it definitely is. And... They know that. That's why they're not doing it again in in the new movie. So, all right, now let's talk about some of the episodes that I really enjoyed. Uh, some standout episodes for me, and I, I like the start of it. How, how? I mean, first of all, just really quick, it's funny to me. Why does he need teenagers? Like, why can't you get like grown adult martial artists? Like, you need teenagers with attitude. I don't think they ever explain why, but it's just funny to me. But I, I like the beginning episodes, but really when it started to get really good to me is episode 12. It's called Peace, Love, and Woe. And it's, um, so Billy kind of has this love interest and she gets trapped by Madame Woe, 
this character. She could send people to different dimensions, apparently. And it was the first time where I noticed that they had a ranger dealing with an issue on his own. And he had to fight her by himself. And it was really cool because they could, they could so easily just have every scenario involving action have all of them fighting the monster. But there's a lot of times where they have one ranger dealing with one issue and they have to fight the monster themselves and that was the first time I noticed it so I really like Peace, Love, and Woe um, and it, yeah, it was one of my favorite episodes especially early on in, in the first part of episodes 1 through 30 next episode that it really stood out to me is called, it's episode 14, Foul Play in the Sky and kind of for the same reason because it's kind of based around Kimberly and uh, her uncle takes her on a on a plane ride and Rita poisons her uncle to make him fall asleep and Kimberly has to fly the, fly the plane and while she's doing all that the rangers are getting defeated by Snizzard, a, this villain who can swallow them and he defeats them and she comes down and defeats him by herself so four rangers couldn't defeat him and they say Sauron says Kimberly needs her bow and arrow to defeat the Snizzard but and just when she used her bow and arrow and like four arrows go in his neck like it was pretty dope and, and it's just another example of how one ranger dealing with something uh, is really a highlight of the show now of course I gotta talk about it the green with evil saga every everyone's favorite thing to do with the season one and of course the infamous green ranger for me I love the green ranger and I love the Tommy character but he's not my favorite a lot of people Instantly, Green Ranger is my favorite. I gotta go with Jason. The Red Ranger is my favorite. Tied with Kimberly. Jason and Kimberly are my favorites. Uh, I like all of them, but if you had to make me choose, I'll choose Jason. But, gotta love me some Green Ranger. And the Green with Evil saga is from episodes 17 through 21. And it's, of course, when Rita chooses someone to be her Green Ranger. She gives Tommy Oliver the green power coin and brainwashes him to attack the Power Rangers. This is the first time that I felt a real threat for the Power Rangers. Like, the command center gets attacked, Zordon gets sent away or destroyed for a certain time period, Alpha gets messed up, the Power Rangers are constantly getting defeated episode and after episode, and it's a real challenge for them. And first of all, I like Tommy, and I like how he kind of challenges Jason, both in martial arts and leadership and just as like kind of the lead of the show but he, they they don't really uh, have Jason take a back seat but he's kind of overshadowed by Tommy f for a little bit there and so I do like Tommy as a character and the Green Ranger is just so badass he looks badass he has the shield on his chest he just looks great and I I know now why so many people and myself loved it so much when I was a kid now I can't talk about the Green Ranger without talking about the freaking Dragon Zord. What, the, what the f? So awesome. Imagine what. So, <coughs> excuse me. The Green Ranger is not going to be in a new movie next year, I don't think. But imagine what they could do in a sequel with the Green Ranger. He could be the villain of the sequel of season two, or at least the the muscle for Rita in in the sequel to the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Imagine the freaking Dragon Zord fighting the Mega Zord in a modern live action. What is the Dragon Zord going to look like? You cannot tell me that doesn't sound exciting because it really does. Um, and I love the flute, the, the noise the flute makes when he summons the Dragon Zord, the stuff the Dragon Zord can do. So awesome. Uh, some of the highlights of the episode run uh, when Jason gets sent to the Dark Dimension and he's kind of playing mental getting played mental games with with uh, Goldar and he has to fight Goldar and the Green Ranger so those little moments were cool and then it was the first introduction to Scorpina in episode 19 during the saga as well and I think she's a pretty cool villain and I'm reading the Power Rangers comics right now and she's like Rita's right hand so uh, yeah I overall love the Green with Evil saga definitely a very strong point in the whole season so another episode that stood out to me is episode 22 and it's called trouble with shell shock so after the green with evil saga tommy has now joined the power rangers and tommy and jason have this martial arts tournament oh no this is that's later on i'll talk about that later but this is the first time we see uh, jason and tommy working together 
I think the other Rangers are getting defeated, and Tommy and Jason have to fight together, so that was pretty cool. And then uh, episode 23, called titled Itsy Bitsy Spider, uh, was the first, I believe it was the first time the Dragon Zord combined with the other Zords to make the Dragon Megazord. Holy crap, that's so cool. And then what I was talking about, the martial arts tournaments with Tommy and Jason, that's episode 26, Gung Ho. I think this is my favorite episode of the whole entire season. Again, from episodes 1 through 30, which I've only watched so far. So, part 1. Uh, so, from episodes 1 through 30, I think Gun Ho, maybe tied with one of the Green Ranger episodes, is my favorite. And, according to the show, Gung Ho means work together in Chinese. I don't know, does it? You tell me. But, that's what, they, that's what Trini says in the show. And, so, Tommy and Jason have this martial arts tournament, and they're supposed to work together, but then it also, it's like... Not a metaphor, but it, it's a reflection of them working together as a as the Power Rangers too. And who in this episode, Rita creates these super putties who are apparently more powerful. But all that changed is their hands are bigger. I thought that was stupid. I that in the cheesy parts. If you're making super putties, they should look different, be bigger, be smart. First of all, hold on one second. The super putties are so stupid. They can't even fight. Like, I could beat up a super putty. There's a... Jason's cousin, who's a freaking like ten year old kid in the show, beats up a super putty like horrible, whatever you want to call them. Things for the Power Rangers to fight. Ugh, hate the super putties. But it gives us cool action scenes, so whatever. But getting back to Gung Ho, uh, Jason and Tommy get sent on this mission together, and it's kind of a test by Zordon. And you first, this is when you first meet Titanus, the. Um, the the big lizard type robot creature that um, eventually leads to them creating the Ultra Zord. But I'll get to that in a second. But Tommy and Jason working together on this mission, and you know they're not they don't like like each other that much, but they're they're cool with each other though. And they're they're running up this hill trying to trying to get these new weapons to defeat the Super Putties. And Titanus is like you know knocking them down, knocking them down, and they they're working together. And Jason says. This is when I got like the chills. Jason, and it's not that serious, but it's just, for me, it meant a lot. Jason was like, you're, uh, I'm faster and have more agility than you, but you're better than with a sword than me. So uh, I'll run up the hill and distract him and you use my sword and, and, and get him. And it just was like, wow. So these two characters have big egos and that was them setting their egos aside and working together to accomplish the task and also Tommy tr gives Jason his the gold shield on his suit and you get to see the red ranger with the gold shield such a great moment so definitely my favorite moment and episode from episodes 1 through 30 is gung ho and then you get to see oh no you don't see the ultra zord in that episode but later a couple episodes later you see titanus combined with the megazord to create the ultra zord which is dope and uh and I also really liked episodes 28 and 29, Island of Illusions. They were like the most personable episodes and the, the episode that felt like the most mental challenge for the characters. It was another time where Rita was definitely winning. And she didn't. they didn't defeat her until the second episode. So really liked that. So yeah, overall, I know that the show's cheesy, but I still love it. It's my childhood. And there are so many elements, like I said, the costumes, the morphing, the zords, the monsters, the space aspects, uh, the character interactions that make the show good and set it as primed for what the movie could be coming out next year in March. So, yeah, that's my review of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers Part 1, Season 1, Episodes 1 through 30. Thank you all for listening. Um... Let me know in the comment section what you think of season one. If you have seen it, if you haven't, let me know uh, if you're looking forward. Did I make you want to watch it or not? And yeah, thank you all for listening again. I'm Jacob Bartley. You can find me on Twitter at Jacob Bartley underscore on my movie YouTube channel, Apocaflix Movies. And on this Comic Hero Talk YouTube channel, please subscribe. Hit that like button. I'm going to be reviewing a lot more. I'm going to review the rest of season one, season two. And then the Mighty Morphin Power Rangers movie. And then season three. I'm probably going to stop at Morphin. Because 
they got out of hand with Super Mega Force. What is that? I I watched some YouTube clips of the new shows. They're just horrible. And I even lost interest like after Power Rangers in Space. I started losing interest when I was a kid. So yeah, I'm probably gonna stop at Mighty Morphin. But yeah, subscribe to this YouTube channel if you love Power Rangers, if you love Star Wars, if you love Marvel, if you love DC, if you love movies, if you love TV shows, if you love comics, subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I'm not just trying to, you know, benefit off of it. I I want to create a community where I can talk about these things that I love with other people that love them as well. So thank you all for listening again. I'm Jacob Bartley. Till next time, take care.